those of you who keep up on some of the political things that go on and YouTube and other places online, you may wonder how in the world did a group like Guerrilla Mainframe get caught up and actually labeled as black identity extremists and their founder have charges get filed against them. Well, I'm going to give you my opinion, not attack, not support, just neutral, just trying to be totally objective here. So don't flame, even though you probably won anyway, about how I think that probably happened. Okay, so this is the website of Guerrilla Mainframe. They are a small organization of martial artists who do community work, I believe, in Texas. So this is the reason why I am going to make a quick video about this. They are probably the only group that I think got caught up in the uh, the FBI's hunting of what they were calling black identity extremists. I guess a black identity extremist is someone who's black and extreme in their identity and their ideology, um, where they would be considered a terrorist threat, even though there was there's been no credible designation of a group like this in the United States since the 1960s. Okay. So when this term first came up on YouTube, probably anybody who was black on YouTube looked at that and said, that sounds like some kind of weird excuse to just go after people. So that's pretty much what I thought too. And to be clear, all charges that were filed against the founder of the group, because he ended up being arrested for weapons charges, but um, he was eventually exonerated. This is, this is the founder, I believe. Let me zoom in here. Uh, Chief Rakim Balangun. And I've checked out a couple of their martial arts pages on YouTube. It looks like a, a um, pretty good mix of uh, striking and grappling. I read a couple of articles about him too. He's pretty much comes from a wrestling background. So if all you people who want to go, is it cage worthy? Yeah, it's cage worthy. But this is the, I'm going to point out something here and I'm not saying I hate them or that, you know, or anything like that. This is not for me to attack them. This is something I just want to point out to anybody who's doing community work like this and especially people who are doing the martial arts. This is something right here that I think can be used and is an excuse to come after you. They say on their web page, if you can look at point number four here. Now this, of course, is assuming this is their web page and not somebody trolling, okay? Number four, we support the abolishment of the U.S. Constitution as a political right and favor a government based on the needs of the people. Example, land, bread, and housing. Now, to me, personally, even that, I wouldn't panic about that. But this is something I know having been in the military and having taken government positions as a contractor. When you say you are doing anything against the United States Constitution, you are going to ruffle some feathers. This guy also was um, the founder, Rakim Balogun, if you read about him, I may put some links to him uh, later, probably not as soon as I upload this. Is that gonna work? He was a Marine, he's an ex-Marine, okay? When you swear into the military and when you swear into government positions, even me when I swore in the military and when I worked as a government contractor, you cannot say you are against the Constitution of the United States. You take an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. 
So that means that that is something that people take seriously who are very much see it as their job to support the American government. So that's my critique, not criticism, not hatred, not I want anything bad to happen to the guy or I don't want his efforts to continue. Especially if you read that article, I cannot remember the name of the website. I think it was the UK website. They did a very good article about how he's helping out people in the community. But in my opinion, okay, this is just my opinion. I don't think you should say that. I would say stay away from making statements like this. That you support the abolishment of the United States Constitution. Don't attack the Constitution. See number five, universal health care. There are people that hate that. But that's something that's not bad in and of itself. We want freedom for prisoners of war. That's good. Redistribution of land and power. You want to make, um, I would say you would make people who are capitalists go against that. But that's not something that's necessarily could be seen as anti-government. Here, this is still to be rhetorical. We're going to overthrow the capitalist system. There's nothing wrong with wanting a solution to capitalism. I look at this as being a critique of pure capitalism because no pure anything ever has worked out in real life. At least that's what I learned in school. Pure capitalism, pure communism, pure anarchism. No, you need something that has a realistic balance in the real world. Just like in martial arts, you need techniques to have a real, you need to make your martial arts game to be something that is balanced for you and that works out in the real world. Okay, so stay away from saying you want to criticize the Constitution, I mean, you want to get rid of the Constitution, and then your attackers won't have a leg to stand on. Ultimately, he was acquitted of all charges anyway, so I say you could, you could type in the name into YouTube, and you'll find some stuff of them working out and their techniques. I'm thinking they may, even, they may have some Q show in there because they pronounce Ki when they're yelling, so it sounds like they may know a little something about energy words, or at least the founder does, or whoever taught him knows something about that. So I would say he's probably got some classical training in something like a karate do or a classical taekwondo. So again, I'm not affiliated with this group. I'm also not against this group. I'm interested in anything that has to do with the martial arts. So if it's got to do with the martial arts, especially if it's got to do with people doing martial arts in the African-American community, I'm going to at least cover it, if not know about it, because I feel like that's just me keeping up on what's going on in, the, in my um, industry, although it be part time. And one more thing before I close. One reason I cover this is because this is how martial arts, which is one way martial arts got started in a lot of um, black urban areas in the United States. It was from groups like the Black Panthers who went around starting community programs. See, these are the, like, but he's doing with his stuff. He's got community empowerment patrols, something with food, clothing, and shelter, community health and awareness. I think the martial arts is under that. But that's how, oh, here it is. This is their martial arts program, G-M-M-A-P, okay? But that's how a lot of martial arts got trained. It says right here, for USA Armed Forces and Mixed Martial Arts, just to name a few. So that's what their instructors have, have been affiliated with. But um, martial arts got started in a lot of these areas, historically speaking, from groups like these community activist groups that were similar, if not up to and including the Black Panther Party, and also people who learned in the military and went back and trained their communities. So that's a part of martial arts history in America. So thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this with people who like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts. Stay away from criticizing the U.S. Constitution and saying you want to get rid of it, okay? Unless you want the federal government knocking on your door, okay? All right. And peace. And thank you for your time, as always.